Hi students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. Welcome, Marjona. I can't read the Cyrillic, but welcome. Uh, Akhil Putavala, Mariam, nice to see many of our students. Bharat, our members, good that you're in the class. Uh, in this lesson, we are focusing on the listening section and Hearing that band nine information, that's our goal. Uh, again, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com. Uh, and uh, for academic IELTS, you want to visit us there at aehelp.com to improve your communication and your English. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. You can always see the URLs. I've written them up here. And uh, if you want our apps, go to your app store, look for Academic IELTS Help app, links to ahelp.com, General IELTS Help app, links to gieltshelp.com. If you have questions, uh, you can contact me at adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, to become a member of our premium IELTS course, uh, click that big red button, the join now button, at ahelp.com or the big red button at gieltshelp.com and you will definitely uh, get some of the best materials out there to improve quickly and get some better band scores. Of course, you can get our materials from Amazon. Also search Amazon for our exam books, A Helps Academic IELTS, GE Helps General IELTS. Welcome, Rashika. Hi, Alpha. Hi, Sammy. Welcome, Carolina. All right, everyone, so right now, listening part one and part two. Uh, tomorrow, we will do part three and part four. Unfortunately, one class is not long enough to do all of these parts, plus it might get a little bit long. Uh, and members, we'll do a task one writing tomorrow as well uh, for the academic. So um, for the listening, we're using our second exam book, test four, for this. And um, when you do the listening in the IELTS, you have to answer while you're listening. So you really have to focus and pay attention. There's very little room uh, for air. You have to train your ears for individual speakers, uh, for groups of people talking in English. And they could be using some different accents, uh, even if they're just speaking British English, even within Britain uh, and even within England, there are a variety of different English accents. So make sure you train your ears for different kinds of accents. Okay, everyone, uh, let's just get into it. Let's just tear off that Band-Aid and uh, start with listening part one. I will give you strategies throughout the lesson. Uh, please don't put your answers, so do not put your answers in the chat. Give everybody a fair chance to answer, and also wrong answers are confusing for other students, so just put your answers into a separate document or on a piece of paper, and then we'll go through them together at the end, okay? Uh, now, I'm going to use my uh, headset microphone and uh, Bose speaker here uh, for this listening. We're going to use the website to play the audio. It's okay. It's The, the quality is decent, but uh, definitely if you have a headset, um, it, turn up the volume. That could be helpful, okay? All right, everyone. So uh, let's get into it. I'm just going to hop over to our website here and get into my student account uh, here and then because this is our fourth exam uh, we just go to our audio CDs and in the audio CDs it will be CD4 uh, track one let's get there okay uh, so again I will play the audio and uh, just uh, listen answer put the answers into a separate document here we go everyone um, all right, so max volume on my end. I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, definitely maximum on volume on my end. So, okay, yeah, here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. 
you will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a student and a university administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Oh, hi there. Is this the university registrar's office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the university's assistant registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. The student says she has concerns about registration. So B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh, hi there. Is this the university registrar's office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the university's assistant registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. Certainly. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson. Melanie Anderson. And well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks then, Ms. Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. Exactly. I don't know my precise average, but it is not good. Could you look into this for me? Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E. A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E -E My family ancestry is Swedish. Right then. And the next piece of information I need is your student registration number. Okay, um, oh... It seems I've left my student identification with my registration number on it in the car. Can I give you some other piece of information or identification? Yes, you can. Along with your surname, I can find your account with your date of birth. Great. It's the 20th of August, 1997. The 20th of August, 1997? Yes, that's right. All right. Let's see your account then. Okay, here it is. Well, I see what you mean about your marks. These are certainly not ideal. However, your average is above the level necessary to proceed to year two of your programme. However, I do see there's a hold on your account which is preventing you from registering for classes. Yes. See, I thought that was because of my marks. No, it's not. It's actually because you have unpaid library fines. Library fines? Yes. During the past year, you must have been tardy in returning some items to the university library. Yes, I think I was. Hmm, hardly seems like a good reason to prevent a student from registering, though. I know how you feel, but books are expensive for the university library to acquire and we must coerce students to pay fines one way or another. How much do I owe? Six pounds twenty. Six pounds twenty? Well, I suppose it's a relief the total is so small. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview 
and answer questions six to 10. Well, now that that is out of the way, I did have another concern. I need advice on what modules to take in my first semester. I'm in the BA Art History program, but as you can see from my record, I failed a class, which is a prerequisite for two modules I'm supposed to take this semester. Yes, it looks like that's right. It was Art History 1270 that you failed. Is that right? 1270. Yes, I took it with Professor Calder. I found his teaching style did not match my learning style. Right. Well, that Art History class is indeed a prerequisite for both Art History 2170 and 2260. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I found out earlier. Is there anything that can be done? Well, Miss Anderson, I think there is. Here's what we'll do. We'll register you in the module you failed last year, and then we'll put you in Art History 2240, which counts towards your degree in place of 2260. 2240 has no prerequisite, however. But what about the 2170 class? Yes, well, that's where we'll have to be creative. Are you comfortable taking an extra class in the spring semester? Yes, I think so. Good. We will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching art history 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, everyone, and use that time to check your answers. Make sure you didn't make any simple spelling mistakes. Just pause the audio here. And now we'll go through the answers together, and I'll give you a bit of strategy. So um, <clears throat> first things first, uh, we had about a well, good minute of um, introduction time. And um, during that minute, uh, you actually saw me scroll to the other parts of the uh, listening section. I did that on purpose, so I didn't accidentally do that. I did that uh, because I wanted to get an idea of the other um, topics for the other parts, okay? So uh, did anybody catch what part two, part three of this listening will be about? So this is the first strategy that I'm giving you here is during that instruction time, uh, go through the uh, part two, part three, part four topics. Okay, Moria says part two is something about a resort. Um, part three is professors and zoo animals. <clears throat> Anybody catch part four? Arda says part three was about the beach, I think. Sammy says part two was the zoo. And um, what was uh, part four about? Okay. Uh, creation, Nobly is very good. So said something about turtles in the last part. Yeah, Abhishek says tours, zoos, and a turtle. Okay, good. So uh, here's an important strategy for the listening section. Uh, during the one minute instruction time, uh, go through and identify the topics of part two, three, four. Uh, this will make it easier. This will help you when you get there, okay? Um, so the example here is uh, part two was uh, uh, something about a, a resort. Uh, part three, uh, zoos. And part four, something about a turtle. Okay, and you get your brain moving on that information, thinking about that information. Yeah, Carolina says, it's turtles, uh, loggerhead turtles. If anybody watched Finding Nemo, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Loggerhead turtles are those beautiful, big, flat turtles that swim in the ocean. Okay, um, so good. So keep that in mind. Well done, okay? Now, uh, just a quick tip for those of you who are using some older books as well for your studies, like the earlier Cambridge uh, practice exams, they do not have this uh, example 
in part one anymore. They go directly into the listening and start with the first question after uh, your review time, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so this first question is actually... Um, not too bad, but the second one's a bit tricky. So this is a multiple choice. You really have to listen for the answer, and the, they state the answer very clearly. So uh, number one, in which year of university is this student enrolled? Okay, so is it first, second, or third year? And Nadia says, that's B, it's second year. Yeah, the, the student says, I'm in my second year of studies, right? So it's very, very clear. First uh, couple of questions shouldn't be too bad. Although this one, the second question, is a bit challenging. So here you put uh, B, use the capital letter. You put B into your answer sheet, and you're good to go. Okay. So um, what is the student concerned about most? Pay attention to words like this. Okay. So here she says, I'm worried about my something. Um, is it A, her marks, B, her registration status, or uh, C, her identification? Okay. Yeah, this one's tricky. Everybody says marks, but in fact, she's not that worried about her marks, and you can kind of figure that out um, later on as well. She's actually most worried about her registration status. Um, I'll show you what I mean, okay? I'll, it's, it's a tricky one, and sometimes you come across these uh, tricky questions in the IELTS. Uh, when you're practicing at home, what you need to do at this point is you need to check uh, the transcripts. And <clears throat> here, the transcripts are on uh, at the back of the book, so you have to pay attention to what she's saying here, okay? Uh, so let me just... Uh, clarify this for you, okay? So any good book, like our exam books on our websites, um, they will give you this information, okay? So let me show you this, okay? So here, um, they start talking, okay? And right away from the beginning, you can say, see that the student, Melanie, says, great, thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I had a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. So right away in the beginning, she mentions that she's concerned about her registration. Okay, And then um, they keep going here. Okay. And... Uh, She says, okay, well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. So she's beginning her second year of uni. Um, and she, then the registrar says, you're worried about your marks then, Miss Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. So here, again, yes, she's worried about her marks, but she's most worried about her registration. And anybody who's a university student, especially in the first year or two, uh, you're worried about your marks, but you're even more worried about being able to do your classes. Okay? All right? Um, so here, she says, exactly. I don't know my uh, average, but it's not good. Could you look into it? Now let's say that at this point, you're like, okay, I think it's her marks, I think it's her registration status. Uh, in the 30 seconds when you're finished uh, with the part, uh, think about the entire section, okay? Uh, notice how here, later on, um, if for, okay, They're talking more about this registration, okay? So um, the administrator says, well, I see that you're, what you mean about your marks. These are not ideal. However, your average is above the level necessary to proceed to year two. Uh, I see that there's a hold on your account, which is preventing from registering for classes. So we keep 
uh, coming back to this registration and then Melly says, yes, I thought that was because of my marks. So she's concerned about her marks, but she's more concerned that she can't register for her classes. And we later discover that the reason she cannot register for her classes is because of overdue uh, library fines. Did everybody catch that later on? So um, what is she most concerned about? She's most concerned about her registration, not being able to register, right? Uh, think about it also. If you're a student and you can't register for your classes, you're more worried about that uh, than your marks, okay? All right, so the marks are just a part of the bigger problem. The bigger problem is that she's not able to register. Hope that's clear for everyone. Now, it's a little bit of a tricky question, but from understanding the entire conversation, uh, you can understand this answer or this information, okay? All right, um, so what is the student most concerned about? She's most concerned about her registration status. That's why she's at the office, okay? All right, so again, a uh, big tip here, students, and then we'll move through these answers a little bit more smoothly, but I do want you to have clarity here. So um, <clears throat> this is a tip, okay? So during your IELTS preparation, make good use of listening and reading uh, transcripts at the back of exam books to in order uh, to identify the reasons for answers okay so it's a very very important step so make sure to do that okay don't just go oh, whatever I got it wrong no big deal I'll get it right the next time um, all right now we had to complete some demographic information uh, here we go so complete the notes below Write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. Firstly, her name. They're looking for her student number. Her name is Melanie and then her surname. British people say surname. Okay. Um, so what is the surname of Melanie? Okay. That's right, Marjorna. It's Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Um, with an E. Okay, she emphasizes that E. She says, it's with an E, not with an O. It's my uh, Swedish. So if you wrote it with an O, then you got it wrong. Catherine Pang, nice job, Anderson. Uh, really pay attention to that where they go, it's um, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. It's an E at the end because I'm Swedish, okay? Um, welcome, Caroline, to our group of members. Nice of you to join us. Uh, so Anderson, Anderson, okay. It's okay to write all capitals, but it's much faster to write lowercase if you can, all right. Um, okay, her birthday, uh, keep it simple. All you need is the month and the year. So 1997, for the month, I definitely recommend using the abbreviation uh, for the month. Yeah, Moria, very good, 20th August. Um, the simplest way is what Sammy wrote. So Sammy just wrote 20 Aug. Yeah, that's correct, 20th August, okay, or Aug 20. It's totally fine. Uh, people write dates in all different ways. As long as you have the right abbreviation and the right number, it's correct, okay? So August 20th, all right. Uh, and the last one, and this is the reason she cannot register for her classes, the library fines due. So how much does Melanie own? And this is, uh, by the way, for those of you who are planning to do university in Canada, US, UK, uh, this is the way that it works there. Um, if you have fines and you don't pay them, you can't register, okay, for your classes. So it's six pounds 20. The system will simply shut you down, okay? So you have to make sure that you're all paid up, otherwise you cannot register for classes. So, uh, Irfana, you do not need to put a full stop for abbreviations. If it makes you feel better, you can, but you don't need the dot, okay? Okay, uh, so 620, they give you this symbol for pounds, so don't repeat it. All right. Okay, um, so now we have the second half, a little bit more discussion about classes. Uh, what program is the student in? 
All right, so very clear here. And it says uh, no more than three words for each answer, so uh, maximum three, okay? Yeah, Cindy, no worries. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, Rashika says BA art history. Yeah, art history is actually enough here. If you write BA art history, it's fine. Um, BA actually means Bachelor of Arts, okay? <clears throat> the program itself is really just art history. But if you wrote BA art history, that's fine. Okay, they'll take that. They won't take number, uh, marks for that, okay? BA art history. You don't need to write program uh, uh, clan, cool clown clan, um, because um, uh, it's understood, okay, from the question program, right? Okay, uh, so the next one, you have to match the correct description with the correct letter. So in your answer sheet for seven, you have to put A, B, or C, um, the class number. So um, class 2170, uh, taken and failed, will take in the spring or not taking it at all? A, uh, B, or C? Yeah, they talk quite a bit about this. And um, I think the administrator even says, that's where we have to get a bit creative. Are you okay with taking the class in the spring? And then the girl says, yeah, I guess so. I'm fine with that. So. Uh, B it is, okay, 7 is B. Um, <clears throat> number 8, 1, 2, 7, 0, uh, taken and failed, will take in the spring or not taking at all, okay. Now, she's currently enrolling in her second year of classes, and you know second year classes in your syllabus because they start with these twos. First year classes start with one, Third year classes start with a three, fourth year classes start with a four, and graduate classes usually start with a number five, okay? Um, pathway classes, like high school grade 12, usually start with a zero, right? And that's true for almost any university in Australia, Canada, US, UK. Um, the university I went to was just three numbers, but it was the same kind of idea. So uh, number one means it's a first year class, uh, she was in first year and she failed it. So uh, that's taken and failed. One, two, seven, zero. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's a little tip about university syllabus structure. Okay. Uh, number nine, two, two, six, zero. Well, if you got seven and eight correct, you should definitely get nine correct. Um, it's clearly C, not taking it at all. So B, A, C. Okay. By deduction, obviously. Okay, uh, so the next and final one, multiple choice, just true and false, two choices. Uh, the student is registered for 1270 with the same professor as she previously had. Is it true or is it false? Irfana says it is false. Many of you are saying B. Yeah, um, the administrator says I've put you in Professor Hennessy's class. Uh, not the same one, because she complains about the other professor. She says, I failed that class because I, I didn't really get along with the professor. So definitely B, okay? All right, everyone, how did you do? What did you get out of 10? And again, you're looking for nine or more. I mean, if you got eight, it's okay. But part one, it's supposed to be the easiest part. So you should be getting at least eight. Hopefully, you're getting nine. Arda says, I got nine. That's great. Uh, Marjona, 10 out of 10. That's wonderful. Yeah, perfect scores are always great. All right. Uh, Rashika, 8. Yeah, it's, it's okay. All right. Definitely you don't want to get less than 8. All right. If you're getting less than 8, you got to be careful because if you've gotten too wrong in part 1, um, then uh, it's tough to get a high score in the listening because the later parts are even more challenging. Okay. All right, so Sandeep, you got to work on it. MC Tony or McTony, uh, you got to work on it. Okay, not a lot, but a bit for sure. Okay, everyone, uh, so far so good. Let's um, let's go on to part two now. I've got a couple of bright questions here, so I'm going to darken up our screen a little bit for this. Okay, uh, let's apply some of these strategies. Pay really, really careful attention to. 
uh, spelling and to what the questions are actually asking you as well. Okay, uh, let me just get us a bit darker here. Uh, maybe that will work. Okay, uh, so here we go, everyone. Don't worry about me. I'm a silhouette. Again, uh, listen for the... Oh, maybe we can do a little bit brighter. All right, uh, so listen for the uh, answers. Don't put the answers into the chat, and uh, we'll go through them after. Turn up the volume if it's quiet. Use a headset, okay? All right, everyone, here we go. So uh, let's get going with... part two of this listening test. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Two. You will hear a woman showing a group of people around an all-inclusive resort hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. I'd like to welcome all of you to the White Sands Five Star Resort here in beautiful Veradero, Cuba. Today, I'm going to show you the fine features you'll get to experience during your stay here at White Sands. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Hi there. Yes, I have a quick question. How long will the tour be? I have to meet the rest of my family for lunch in an hour. Not a problem, sir. The tour will take no more than 30 minutes. If after this time, anyone wants more details on any of the resort's features, I can help them out individually. Any other questions? No? Well, let's get started then. White Sands covers 10 acres of land, including direct access to over 250 metres of pristine Caribbean coastline. It is perfectly safe to swim in the waters here at White Sands, but do be on the lookout for jellyfish in the water. They are not deadly, but their sting does pack a punch. As we pass through the lobby, I want you to take note of the main bar area on your left. The bar is open from 11 in the morning each day and closes at 1 o'clock a.m. each night. As we proceed down the main path, you'll see four apartment buildings, marked A and B on your left, and C and D on your right. Between buildings C and D on your right is one of our finest restaurants featuring traditional Cuban cuisine. We have seven restaurants in all at White Sands, and we invite you to try your favourites while you are here. I have a question. Go ahead. In our brochure, I read that we are only entitled to five restaurant visits per week we stay at the resort. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The restaurants are only open for dinner, and reservations are mandatory. You will be able to make reservations at the end of this tour or any time before five this evening. When you are not dining at our a la carte restaurants, you may eat at either of our two buffet restaurants, which are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Additionally, there is a night cafe, which is open until 4 a.m. Does the resort have a nightclub for dancing? Yes, of course. We have a discotheque located at the end of the main resort path, further away from the apartments. This is, of course, for noise reasons. In fact, the discotheque is conveniently located next to the night cafe. And what are the discotheque's hours? It opens at 8 in the evening and closes at 3 a.m. early the next morning. Last call for drinks is at 2.45. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. and answer questions 17 to 20. Next, I'd like to take you down to the beach and show you some of the facilities and services we offer. As we approach the beach, you'll notice the brilliant white sand that our resort is named after. The sand is incredibly fine and is lovely to walk on in your bare feet. 
Now you can see to your left is one of our beach bar facilities. There is also another beach bar about 100 meters to your right. These bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 in the afternoon. On your right is a small cafe serving snack food items during the same opening hours as the beach bar. And straight ahead of us is our beach changing facility where you can change into your swimming costume, use the toilet or have a shower. Are there any water sports included in our holiday package? Good question. Yes, there are. You have unlimited access to our skin boards, surfboards and beach sports equipment, such as beach volleyball and football. Additionally, you may sign up for windsurfing at our activity desk, located adjacent to the resort lobby. Finally, you may also register for our weekly water polo tournament, which is held each Friday afternoon at half past two. Does anyone else have any? That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, make sure to check your answers during that time. Uh, let's go through the answers together. Um, once we get past question 17, I'll brighten up our lives a little bit here. Okay, so here we go. Uh, question number 11, approximately how long will this tour be? Okay, um, if you can't see it too clearly, uh, then um, change your resolution to 720p. So do a 720p resolution and you'll see it clearly, okay? All right, um, so <clears throat> about how long is this uh, tour? A quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, one hour, 60 minutes, or half an hour, 30 minutes, okay? Yeah, the correct answer is C, half an hour. So uh, this um, tour guide says it'll take about 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes is half an hour. Now, because it's part two, there's more paraphrasing, so you won't necessarily see the exact information that you hear. Okay, now here, this is kind of tricky. Uh, you had to choose four of the uh, eight choices, and it's four uh, marks, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? So um, here it was good to take notes and really visualize the answers. Uh, what does this resort include? A night cafe? Um, yeah, I think we heard something about a night cafe. All right. Um, and uh, so that was good. I heard something about a night cafe. All right. Uh, deadly jellyfish. I heard something about jellyfish, but... Fortunately, they weren't deadly. They said, oh, packs a punch, but it's not really deadly. 24-hour uh, Cuban restaurant. I did not hear anything about that. Uh, four apartment buildings. Yeah, I remember that because she even said A, B, C, D. That's how they're marked, right? A number of restaurants. Uh, yeah, I think five of them. So, yeah. A dozen acres of land. I don't think they talked about the entire area's size. Direct beach access, um, yeah, so uh, pristine coastline, direct beach access. Okay, so the correct answers here were A, D, E, and G. So A, D, E, G in any order. Let's not confuse you with the apartment buildings. Okay, so these were the correct answers, A, D, E. E, G. Arda, good job. All of them correct. Very nice, Sammy. Nice job, Marjona. Okay, cool. So uh, this one here, I got to it a little bit late, uh, and sometimes that can happen when you're listening as you get to the question a bit later. Uh, definitely that's why the review time is important and keeping some information in your mind as well. So I was able to remember when it closes and when the last call is. So uh, the last call uh, for the discotheque means the last chance to get a drink, 8 p.m., 2.45 a.m., or 3 a.m. Okay, 3 a.m. was when it closes, and last call, so the last chance to get a drink, is usually about 15 minutes before closing time. So the correct answer here and the logical answer here is B. Okay, use logic, students. Logic is also very useful, right? Uh, they're not going to 
uh, have the last call when it's closing. Okay. Now, if you're not sure what last call means, you can kind of guess it if you think about it. Okay. All right, so this question 17, this is why I made the screen dark so you could see this a little bit more clearly. It's a description of uh, the beach. So you get on the beach, there's a beach bar to the left, and then a beach bar to the right. How far are these apart? What's the distance? So if I want to get a beer here, ooh, my, or a cocktail with my little umbrella, uh, how much time do I have to drink my um, well, let's call it a pina colada. Uh, so how much time do I have to walk over uh, with my pina colada and uh, drink that pina colada uh, before I get my next pina colada? So how much distance do I need to cover? <laughs> Cab Thug says, you've got to walk 100 meters. Yeah, I don't want to say how much time because at the first pina colada, that could be pretty quick, but by the 10th pina colada, it could be a lot slower. So um, yeah, absolutely. So I got to walk 100 meters, okay? That's active listening. It's good to do that, okay? It's good to practice your active listening. And that wasn't a question, but it's good that many of you remembered that. Um, that shows that you're actively paying attention, okay? So, so far, I was clear here. Okay, everything was good. Um, but then um, there was one more detail. The speaker said, the tour guide, that uh, there's also a cafe to the right, so this direction. So the cafe is in the wrong spot here. Uh, the cafe should be there, okay? And so when I got to B, it was kind of like, okay, well, that looks really wrong. Uh, that one looks kind of weird too because of the beach bars, but this one looks like A, except the cafe is also in the right direction. So I know that the right answer here is this one. And so the answer is D. Okay, D is the correct answer. So I can get my uh, pina colada here. I can walk 100 meters, get my next pina colada here. And if I'm feeling a little bit woozy, then I can go up here and grab a coffee. Uh, don't do that. Go for a swim. Stay healthy instead. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're at a resort, you might want to relax. Uh, as well. All right. Um, okay. So here we go. Now we had to do some fill in the blanks. Okay. Um, and uh, let's do this. Um, so again, you had to do a little bit of memorization here. So the beach bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until what time? Uh, it was quite clear here, the time. I'm going to brighten up our day a little bit now. Okay. So there we go. Um, yeah, yay, hi, there I am. Okay, uh, Moria says four. Uh, Arda says uh, 4.30. Okay, so let's see who was able to retain. If, yeah, let's hope, you know, let's hope they stay open till 4.30. So 4.30 uh, p.m. Okay, so uh, two words, um, 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon, or just 4.30 is okay. Uh, because of this word here. So 4.30 in the afternoon. So you don't need PM because you have the word afternoon. So 4.30 is enough. Okay. All right. Um, in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer changing something. Uh, what do they offer? Okay. McTony, lots of listening, lots of feedback and good strategies, visualization. Those are, that's what I can tell you in general. Uh, McTony, go to our website, ahelp.com for academic or gelshelp.com for general. There's lots of information there uh, to help you improve your listening because you're asking a very broad question. Um, yeah, facilities, very good. So that was good. I think, Kashirsha, you had that up there too. Uh, Marjona says facilities. Yeah, changing facilities, it's not just one, it's countable. Okay, and um, uh, you have a men's, you have a women's. So if you think logically, facilities, uh, plural, makes sense. Okay, uh, now, so in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer a changing facilities. Oh, no, uh, that makes sense, but it's wrong. It has to be facility. Always pay attention, especially when you're reviewing uh, to articles. This article means that this noun has to be singular, okay? Mm. So anybody who wrote facilities 
You got it wrong. It's changing facility. Okay. Uh, changing room is American English. Uh, IELTS is British, so they're going to go with facility, not room. Okay. I'm Canadian, Nitin. I'm Canadian, West Coast. Okay. So pay attention to articles when you're writing nouns. Very important. Facility. Okay, uh, where you can change in and out of your swimming costume. We also offer plenty of sports at the resort, whether it is skimboarding, beach volleyball, football, windsurfing, or our once a week something tournament. What kind of tournament is that? What kind of tournament? It is a... Anybody catch those? A little bit of an interesting one. Water polo, Moria. That's right. It's a, a water polo tournament. Very good. Water polo. Two words, water polo, I believe. Tournament. Um, we have activities for everyone. Okay. Uh, very good. All right, uh, students. Add up your marks. How did you do? What did you get out of uh, part one and two? So what did you get out of 20? Okay, at this point, ideally, you're at 16 or more. Okay, so your mark should be 16 or more. Hopefully, you didn't get more than three wrong in part two. Catherine says 20 out of 20. Fantastic, Catherine. Uh, Arda, 18 out of 20 is really good. All right, Irfana, you're right on the border. That's fine. Shavnal, 18 is nice. Okay. Uh, all right. Good job, everyone. Well done. Nicely done. All right. Um, for uh, five more listening exams over 100 hours of HD video lessons, a fully interactive app, lifetime membership for a one-time payment, uh, some of the best IELTS training material in the world online, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general IELTS. I will be back tomorrow at the same time with part three and part four of this listening. And then we'll talk a little bit of strategy for those more challenging sections. It was a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Uh, keep up the good studies and uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. If it's late in your country, get some rest, sleep well. And uh, as they say in English, don't let the bed bugs bite. Okay, everyone. I'm Adrian. Much love to all of you. I'm signing out from Central Europe. Bye for now.